Hi everyone, thanks for checking out another InfoSec Hub video. Today we're going to talk about Network Intrusion Detection System, or IDS. Uh, what's an IDS? Intrusion Detection. So in this uh, diagram here, it's very easy to uh, explain it. You have the internet, which is an untrusted network, a um, bunch of computers of the world population, I would say, they make a request to a server uh, on the trusted network. The server is not there, but I will explain it um, using this diagram. So a request is flowing from the internet to the trusted network. Here we have a firewall. On the firewall, you can set certain rules. So you could GUIP a whole country, let's say for instance, North Korea, you block it, uh, a whole list of IP addresses that is not allowed. So for instance, you come from Germany and it is allowed. So you, the firewall checks where you're coming from, checks if you're connecting to the right port numbers. Uh, let's say for instance, you have a web server. So port 80 should be open and port 80 should be requested. If there's an FTP request coming in, it can be blocked on this firewall. So that's the firewall. Before you go to the trusted network, and the trusted network is where you have your servers, where you have your clients, uh, everything that's managed uh, and that you trust. Every device on there is checked, it's managed, it's trusted. That's a trusted network. After the firewall, the request will still go through a network intrusion detection system because this request coming through the firewall on port 80 might look like it's legitimate, but it might not be. So you need an extra layer of security, I would say, and that's the intrusion detection system. And here it's uh, put as like a server, and here you have the management system, which is the dashboard, and you can see what's happening on your network, what's being blocked, uh, what's happening, uh, and based on that knowledge, you can uh, up your defenses, so to speak. You can see what kind of stuff is happening on your network, what kind of attack patterns are being fired at your trusted network. And on basis of that, you can make some adjust adjustments to the trusted network, for instance. Um, so an IDS could pick up uh, a few things. Uh, that could be ransomware. Uh, ransomware request, let's say, for instance, you have a command and control server when it comes to ransomware. So if a client on your trusted network is infected with ransomware, you always have an external party that controls the ransomware and has access to all these clients that are infected. There are certain ways that the attacker could communicate with those infected clients, and that is an, a, six, a signature. Um, it's a pattern, and this pattern, this communication between the attacker and the uh, endpoint in this case, uh, has a certain pattern, and the IDS can pick this up. So ransomware could be detected with an IDS. Botnets, the same way. You have a command and control server. I explained this in a previous video already. Malware and viruses. Malware, the same way, viruses could also be detected because viruses can make a connection to a certain uh, server uh, on a certain port using a certain protocol. Um, so you have this firewall that should block these kind of requests, but the IDS can show you that this is going on. And they have also a whole list of uh, viruses um, and they can give you that kind of information with the IDS management uh, software. Tor network connections. This is the Tor network, which is basically the deep web. Um, they have onion addresses and they also have their, all, uh, their own IP addresses. So every connection coming from the Tor network to your tr uh, trusted network, you can block Tor network connections on the firewall and it can be noticed and picked up by the IDS, letting you know that Tor clients are trying to access your trusted network. This could mean that you have to yeah, increase security or you can just know that this is happening and um, that this is something that you don't want. 
adware the same way uh, if you have for instance i download something on this end uh, point and i'm installing it here locally and it tries to um, gain access to certain servers it could be picked up by the ids but then the threat is already in your uh, internal network but you want to know of its existence and if you really want to do anything good then you uh, roll out a managed browser that the end user cannot install anything on the browser or on his laptop but this really depends on company policy uh, bitcoin miners the same way if you have uh, some funny guy that brings along a bit mining machine and let it run inside your network because he doesn't need to pay for the electricity uh, he doesn't need to pay for the bandwidth and uh, he got his own own bitcoining machine there it also a bitcoining machine also has to have internet connection um, so this could be picked up as well based on ip based on protocol and based on a certain pattern i would i would say same thing when it comes to file sharing ftp torrents like in the old days these these peer-to-peer -peer, uh network connections can be picked up um also here i find this website this is just a, a company it said that the platform can do historical analysis so every night our cloud environment will do deep analysis on the metadata of last six months and on basis of the most recent threat intelligence data. That way we uh, detect uh, infections that are also have been, um, that took place before there was any data. So they have uh, collected data for the last six months. And let's say for instance, something happened six months ago and four months later, uh, this information was available that this is a potential threat that you could still see that four months prior before that point, something had happened. And why do you want to know that? Because based on the knowledge that you have today, you can still scan your network, your endpoints, your everything. So you want to be able to manage your network and you want to know what's going on because the internet is a scary place. And if you have your trusted network here and you have a couple of servers with databases on it that has user info and you don't you want to do everything in your power you can do to prevent data loss or uh, your data being encrypted with ransomware and those kind of stuff you need data to know what's going on you need to know what flows from the internet to your trusted network and again you have two things a firewall is quite standard nowadays i mean that's that's the least thing you can do but to add another layer you can add this network interaction in, in intrusion detection system so it detects when an intrusion has taken place or is about to take place it warns you um hope this video was useful and if so subscribe to my channel the next video we will talk about an intrusion prevention system which works a little bit different but is in the same family of network protection mechanisms that are out there i want to thank you for uh, watching this video and i hope you all have a great week